Welcome back to recitation. In this video, I'd like to do two problems that ask us to determine the flux of a vector field along a surface. So the first one is I'd like you to find the outward flux of the vector z, comma, x, comma, y through the piece of the cylinder that's shown. So it's just shading the cylindrical part. So it's a cylinder of radius a, and you're taking the piece in the first octant up to height h. So that's the first question I'd like you to answer is the flux of this vector field through that piece of the cylinder, the outward flux. And then I'd also like you to find the outward flux of this vector field, uh, xz comma yz comma z squared, through the piece of the sphere of radius a in the first octant. So again, it'll be in the first octant, like this one is in the first octant, it'll be the piece of the sphere that sits in the same part of three-dimensional space as the piece of the cylinder we're looking at here. So what I'd like you to do again, just find the flux in both cases, the outward flux of the vector listed through the, the surface that is listed. And then when you feel comfortable and confident with your answer, you can bring the video back up and I'll show you how I did it. OK, welcome back. So again, what we're trying to do is determine flux of a vector field through a surface. So I am going to determine First, what the normal is here, and then what f dot n is here, and then using the fact that I know f dot n and I know ds in a good parameterization, I'm going to be able to calculate the integral quite simply. So let's point out first that the normal at any point on the surface, the normal at any point is going to be equal to x comma y comma 0 divided by a, where a is, again, the radius. Because the normal, I know there's no z component. And I actually know it's the same as the normal would be on a circle of radius a. And so this, this vector, x comma y, has length a, obviously, so that's why I'm dividing by a. So when I look at the normal and I dot it with f, let's see what I get. f dotted with the normal is going to be xz plus xy divided by a, right? So I just took x dotted with x times z, y times z, 0 times y. I add those up, and I still have to divide by my a. So that's actually the vector dotted with the normal. Now, what's a natural parameterization to use here is obviously the cylindrical coordinates, because I'm on a cylinder. So what I'm interested in, the radius is fixed. But what I'm interested in is changes in theta and changes in the height. So I'm going to be interested in, in d theta and dz, and I need to understand what ds in this case is. And it's just a d theta dz. So let me write down what I'm going to need to completely determine the rest of number one is I'm integrating over the surface. And I'll put the bounds momentarily. Um, actually, I should also point out I'm going to write x and y in terms of theta, because now I know what they are. x in terms of theta is a cosine theta. And y in terms of theta is a sine theta. So when I simplify the expression f dot n, I get z times cosine theta for my first component. And I get a times cosine theta sine theta for my second component. So let me maybe point out again how I got that. Let me come over here. x is a cosine theta. So I get z times a cosine theta divided by a. So I get z times cosine theta. x again is a cosine theta. y is a sine theta. So I get a squared cosine theta sine theta. And I divide by a. I get a single a cosine theta sine theta. And then my ds, as I mentioned before, is a d theta dz. right? And so now I just have to figure out the bounds in theta and the bounds in z. Well, the bounds in z are very easy. The bounds in z are simply 0 to h. And so I'm going to put those here on the outside. And then the bounds in theta, if I look at my picture, maybe it's helpful to come over and look at my picture. This direction in the x direction is theta equals 0. When I swing around to the y direction, I'm at theta equals pi over 2. So I need to go from 0 to pi over 2, right? So let me come back over here. OK, so now, really, I have a couple constants that are letters, but everything now I'm ready to integrate. So a is just a constant. 
and h is a constant, and z and theta are my variables, and I can actually do this integration quite simply. I'm not going to do it because I, I know this is at this point something we already know how to do, but I'll give you the answer. So let me write down the answer. You get a h squared over 2 plus a squared h over 2. So that's the solution you actually get. So again, I mean, you, you have to you integrate in d theta first. So you have to deal with this. You have to deal with this. This uses a good trig identity. You can use the fact that 2 sine theta cosine theta is sine 2 theta. That, I'll give you that little hint. And then you can figure it out from there. And then you integrate in z. And you, you integrate, you evaluate from 0 to h. So that's, that's the solution to number 1. So now let's look at number 2. And number 2, we have to again figure out we have our vector field, and we know our surface is a piece of a sphere. And so if we're going to parameterize the surface of a sphere, we know we want to use d theta and d phi. Okay, and let me point out first that the normal here, again, the normal is going to be in some ways similar to what we saw in the cylinder, but now instead of x comma y comma 0, because it's a sphere, it's going to be x comma y comma z divided by a. So again, as before, let me just point out the normal that I'm going to be using is x comma y comma z all divided by a. So I'm going to dot f with n and look at the surface integral with respect to ds, capital D capital S there, and I'll see what I get. So again, I know how I'm going to parameterize the sphere. I already mentioned it, but let me say it again. It's going to be in theta and z, sorry, theta and d and phi. Right, because we have a constant radius. We're on a sphere of radius a, so I don't need to change rho. It's a, it's a two-dimensional thing. So theta is varying and phi is varying. So let's see what we get first. Let me do a little work and see what we get when we get look at f dotted with n. So let me first point out that f dotted with n looks like it's x squared z plus y squared z plus, just to make this obvious, z squared z all divided by a. x squared plus y squared plus z squared is a squared, right? So it's actually a squared times z divided by a. So it's just a times z, right? So, so far, all I did was I dotted f with the normal. And I knew the fact that x squared plus y squared plus z squared was a squared, because I was on a sphere of radius a. So a squared times z divided by a is a times z. And now if I want to use the right coordinates, think about theta and phi. z is a cosine phi. So f dot n in the coordinates I'm interested in is going to be a squared cosine phi. So let me get out of the way so you can see that. So that's what our, that's what our f dot n will be. And now if we're going to figure out the flux, of course, it's the integral of f dot n ds. And let's remind ourselves what ds is. ds is going to be a squared sine phi d theta d phi. You saw this in lecture, actually, also. So this should look familiar. And so now I just have to integrate f dot n ds over the right components, over the right bounds for theta and phi. So let's determine what those are. I'll put everything together, and we'll determine what those are. So I've got f dot n ds. That's going to be a to the fourth sine phi cosine phi d theta d phi. And let's think about what is the picture that I need in terms of the first octant of a sphere. Maybe I should draw a quick picture over here so we can remember what that looks like. So it's going to be, this is, not going to be the greatest drawing ever, but it's something like this. And so I've got circles coming, sort of pieces of a circle at each level. I've got a piece of a circle, right? So theta, if this is the x direction, this is the y direction, this is the z direction, theta is going from 0 again to pi over 2. And phi is going from 0 to pi over 2, right? So they're both going from 0 to pi over 2. So hopefully, you were able to get this far, at least in the calculation, or in terms of figuring out the flux of f through that piece of the surface, piece of the sphere. And I'm just, again, going to write down the solution. And then you can check your, your answer against 
the solution. And I got a to the fourth over four times pi. So this whole solution is a to the fourth divided by four times pi. So you can check your solution there. Again, I want to point out what we did in both of these problems is we were trying to compute the flux of a certain vector field through a surface. And if you'll notice, what I actually did in, in this case is I kept the parameterization in terms of x, y, and z, or I kept it in terms of the x, y, z variables first. And then I put it in the parameterization of theta and phi after. And that made it a little easier to hang on to and figure out what it was. Because notice that x, y, and z become very complicated in theta and phi. I have to write a lot more down, I guess, and then simplify things more, careful, more carefully. This way, it was very obvious that I got an a squared times z in the numerator. So sometimes it's a little easier to, to compute the f dot n in the initial x, y, z variables and then change it to the appropriate parameterization for the surface you're looking at. So that's what we did actually in both cases is we computed f dot n. We put it in the right parameterization. And then we had to figure out what ds was. We had to make sure we knew ds. And then we just had to integrate over the appropriate bounds for our parameters. And that's giving us the flux across the surface. So I think that's where I'll stop. <laughs>